since you've found so many people with bacterial contamination and, and there's a growing amount of literature to support both the interaction of the biofilm and the breast tissue leading to kind of downstream what we see in terms of symptoms. So like fatigue and dry eyes and myalgias and things like that, uh, which you both of us see resolved after after explant. And then some of these newer concepts of things like fibroblast growth factor 19, where that's been something that is elevated and then returns to more of a, a normal state. Because you and I both would like to have a biomarker to be able to, you know, follow our patients and know that that is getting better or identify them pre-op and say, oh, hey, well, this is what we find when someone has, you know, QD bacterium acnes or if they have staph epidermidis, this biomarker is relevant. What, what are your thoughts about the, you know, what is a growing amount of evidence supporting these biomarkers? I mean, I would love to have a tool like a diagnostic tool, a screening tool, or a tool that allows me to follow um, patient response over time, both before and after surgeries. Um, you know, in the old days, we had very little to go by. There was the uh, erythrocyte sedimentation rate, the ESR, and then there were uh, complement factors that were looked at, and then certain clotting factors. And now there's more significant uh, understanding about inflammatory pathways in the body and drugs that we use to treat inflammation. And perhaps there are going to be uh, precise markers that we use in the long term. I'm not a, uh, a laboratory scientist. Um, I don't know all of the potential markers that are being studied out there, but I do believe there, there are going to be answers in that universe you know, ways that we can say this patient with symptoms has an elevated biomarker and that gives us more confidence that if we do this procedure, they're going to get symptom relief because I don't know how to guarantee that to patients. I just know that many patients, you know, are improved for any number of, of reasons, but we definitely need to invest more in um, this type of research because the immune and inflammatory pathways of the body have much greater impact on our um, sense of wellness and health than, than we understand and that we appreciate. And it has, you know, not just diagnostic implications, but therapeutic implications, you know, with agents that block certain inflammatory, you know, or immune pathways. 